What's up guys, Jordan here with Objective City Toro's Lesson 22, NS Number Object. Now before I really jump in to this lesson, I'm going to go over a few basic things about objects. Now, soon our objects will be sending messages to other objects to help them accomplish whatever they were created to do. And you won't need uh, to write all these objects yourself because a lot of them will come from the frameworks, um, specifically a Coco Foundation class. So that's a lot of where the objects we'll be using will come from. And in this lesson, obviously, I go over the NS number object and all the types that um, go along with the NS number object. Um, I go over them in lesson two. So if you kind of are a little shady on the types, like float, integer, all that stuff, or if you never even saw that lesson, go ahead and check that out. I'll throw a link down in the description. Anyways, um, just to give you a heads up in future lessons, um, probably the next two or three after this one, I'll be going over arrays and different types of arrays and everything. But anyways, on to NS number. Now, uh, we're going to be now transitioning from numbers as variables to numbers as objects. And actually, pretty much everything will be using in our program will become objects. And some of the things may be a little surprising to you, and one of them maybe a NS number because you may be saying well shouldn't just shouldn't a number be just a variable I mean it's so simple I mean it's one digit or maybe multiple digits but obviously it's just a number you know I mean it's not a complex thing but yes numbers can be objects and uh, some of the reasons why pretty much everything will start becoming an object is uh, some really deep computer science that I really don't even understand and a lot of it also is for practicality because to use the arrays that we're going to be talking about and I know you probably don't know what array is but um, to use another programming element there uh, to use this other program element that we'll talk about in the next couple lessons um, we need these ob we need these numbers to be objects instead of variables so that's why we're we're going over this lesson and learning how to transition them from variables to objects now uh, just a refresher we've been using the double type of variable for pretty much all the numbers in our program so far now how do you create this NS number object well uh, if you look there real quickly at that uh, budget that we created a couple lessons ago, I'm not sure which one right offhand, but anyways, um, it's based on the budget class, as you remember that, that class we created, and it's uh, called Europe Budget, and we have that asterisk there because it's a pointer to the budget, and then we send it that uh, new message, and that new message actually does a couple of things, and I'm not sure if I actually went over this in that lesson, but it actually allocates memory for the object and then it calls the initialize method and it initializes everything to zero. Now, in that budget uh, that we created in the last lesson, that really doesn't matter that it initializes everything to zero. But in this NS number object, that's the big thing because um, we, well, I'll just go through the NS number. Uh, that little method there that uh, we use to create the object. Um, we have NS number because it's based on, it is an NS number. So uh, we had the asterisk again because it's a pointer to this object. Um, it's called number dollars in Europe. Then we have the equal sign, the brackets, and everything. NS number, so we're going to allocate an NS number, allocate a space and memory for an NS number object, and then we're going to initialize it. And so basically we just take the new method and we just split it up and manually do everything that's in the new method, but we initialize it with whatever number we want. We cannot use that new method because if we did, all our numbers would be zero. And obviously that kind of defeats the purpose of having different numbers if they're all just zero. And um, we actually specify the type that we're going to initialize it with. So we say init with double. And then we put a double value there, close off the brackets, put in the semicolon. So that's why we can't use the new um, message 
for creating this object. We have to actually allocate it and initialize it ourselves. Now, there's actually a um, couple other init methods for NS number. You can initialize it with a double, integer, float, a bool, character, all that stuff. Um, it's the same basic idea. Um, just wanted to go through those real quick. Now, um, you can actually convert these NS numbers. So that's another cool thing about NS number. You can convert it from one type to another. And how you do it is you just send it this message, whatever the name of it is. The name of this NS number is dollar. And we're going to now uh, convert it to an int value. So it could have been a float or a double, whatever. Now it's going to be converted to an int value simply with this uh, little message. And uh, you'll also be using this when the NS number is an ob is an argument and uh, when you use NS number in an NS log. So uh, down below there is an example of NS number as an argument. Um, in the method declaration there, instead of double in those parentheses, you see NS number. And then, of course, it's a uh, dollars is the name of it. And then down below, when uh, we subtract and then reassign that uh, dollars value to budget, instead of just having straight dollars, you have to put in double value because um, whatever that value that's going to be passing through that argument, it's a double value. So you have to specify that because all the compiler knows from that method declaration is this is an uh, object type. That's pretty much all the NS number says. It's like just putting variable in there If uh, back when we just used uh, double. Before we specified the type, this way we're just saying what type of general category, variable or object. So that's why you have to do it down below. Now, factory method. Uh, this allows you to create an object without using the al the allocate and init messages. So it's kind of like new in a way, but uh, you can actually specify the number, like the value. So it relies on the class for all the initialization. So um, down below is the old way that uh, we just learned how to create the NS number object. And then up there above is the new way. So you have NS number and then the name of it, the asterisk, all that. So it looks pretty much the same, but you only have a one little message. So you say this is NS number and it's a number. You say number and then with double, with float, with int, whatever. And then you put that number there. And then you close it all off, brackets, semicolon, all that good stuff. Now, this is a shorter way, but it also has some memory management issues. And I know we haven't talked about uh, memory management at all, I don't think. But we'll be getting into that uh, in uh, future lessons way down the road. But, uh, yeah, it has some issues as far as memory management. So we're just going to be using uh, the first way that we learned how to create this NS number object using the alloc and init with double, init with int, init with float, those two messages. Now we're going to go ahead and jump into Xcode and convert some of the variables into an NS number object. <laughs> Thank you. 